Hello everyone, today I'm going to do a brief uh, video demonstration of the cause and effect of integrating your network manager into Symphony and receiving alarms from your perimeter intrusion detection system such as FlexZone, Fiber Patrol, LM100, and the other perimeter intrusion products that send star cells. Now, so today you're, what you're seeing here is the SendStar Symphony client. On the left hand side we have a Pantil Zoom camera. Uh, this brand is an Axis uh, Q-Series PTZ. Uh, you don't specifically have to use Axis, you can really use any PTZ that you prefer. And then you can get that to slew to the queued location that you've put into the rule that when you receive an alarm this PTZ will then go to that specific preset location and start to auto track or just record video for a duration whatever your desired outcome is. The camera on the right that you see is a fixed camera. It's just a, a loop video file nothing critical or important. It's just something that let's say as an operator I need to keep my eyes on so I have it up for visibility. Now typically what happens is we create um, events and these events trigger and cause certain things to action. So here on the right hand side what I want to show is I can by simply going into the settings and under the activity tab I can switch this camera which is just a, a loop video file nothing critical and I want it to switch when an alarm occurs and in this case I want to limit that action to a specific rule that I created which is under my second tab here under the alarms. This rule is going to be that PID zone 1 uh, alarm that I do receive from my Flex Zone 60, which is what I'm going to be using today through my simulator. So once that alarm is received, I want this video to switch, and I also want it to perform an action after it switches. Typically, as an operator, I like it to be a, a blank screen, so it's, it draws more attention to it when that flash of a camera comes live. A lot of our customers like it to go back to a previous state, which would be that a looped video file or whatever video they had. So I'm just going to use that example today and it'll be going back to that previous state after 15 seconds. So we'll apply that and hit OK. And what we'll do now is we'll go into the Network Manager simulator and I'm just going to go ahead and immediately trigger an alarm. So what you can see here is the two things that do happen. The PTZ goes to its preset and the fixed camera on the right changes to the fixed camera at the location of the alarm and is counting down and will now change back in about one second to the previous camera. So a couple other things that you need to pay attention to here on the left hand side of the Symphony client is the device tree. The thermal perimeter camera is uh, under my looped video files and that is the camera that's being uh, marked with the alarm in the timeline. You'll also notice that I do have my network manager devices farther down in the device tree with the FlexZone 60 fully integrated in a good status and connected with all the zones in a secure state. So I want you to watch the color indicators on the right hand side that do change as I go ahead and mark the alarms through my network manager simulator. So you'll see the PID zone 1 comes up on that thermal looped camera and zone 1 goes into a state of an alarm. As soon as that alarm is cleared or it's back into a secure state that red marking in the device tree will also go away. Same thing for the thermal perimeter loop. Once that alarm clears, yeah, it'll go away, which it has now. So the other thing that you'll notice is there's a, a feed on the full, full right-hand side here um, in the alarm console, and that's just a, the simple mode that we're operating in. But at any point in time, if I was to click on any one of those perimeter intrusion alarms that come through, it's going to take me to the point in time where that video uh, was marked with the alarm. So you'll see here I've got two different hashes in my timeline. The red color is the hash for the PID Zone 1 alarms, and the orange is the color for just an uh, analytical alarm for somebody breaching or walking through a perimeter. You can color code those to anything you want. So if Zone 2, Zone 3, Zone 400, you want it to be a different color, that's fine. So now moving from the simple mode in the alarm console to the advanced mode, you have a, a, a bit of a larger feed visible for you and you can filter and sort all of these with all of the different column headers on the top by the sites, the status of the alarms, etc. And then on the right hand side here you've got a grid of display. So as I click on a specific alarm you'll see that the tiles on the right start to populate with the associated video cameras or if you have a uh, perimeter intrusion alarm you're going to notice that I've got the map with the associated camera and I can put these into a live state 
so I can play back that video of actually what's happened or occurring. And then I also got this set of instructions down here on the, on the bottom, kind of centered up in this advanced mode. And these are the guidelines for the breach. And this can be a text file or it can be just text that you've typed in under the instructions uh, in the rule that you create in Symfony. So here it says for me to mark the alarm, so I just mark that. I would just put uh, that this is a test alarm that I generated. And I'm going to go ahead and save that. And if a operator was logged in or a supervisor was logged in, the operators can send those and share those events through the share event uh, button and notify them that there was a false alarm or a, or a positive alarm or something that needed action. And they could share it with another user that was logged in. And then once that's been done, it says to export the video. So I can, from the advanced mode of the alarm console, export my video here. I would just start the video export and straight away it'll... Uh, show the status of the exported video. This is just a simple two-minute clip. Once that completes, it says this is the folder. I could open that. We won't go there. I'll just close this out. And now I followed all of the steps, and the last thing for me to do is to archive that alarm. And when I archive the alarm, it takes it out of the alarm feed on the left-hand side. And the last thing we want to show you is the map integration. So with Symfony, you can create your own maps. As you see, I've got overlays here for Network Manager Simulation Zone 1, and I've also got the simulation for Zone 2, and I've got two different cameras um, that I've put onto the map as well. So what I'm going to go ahead and do here is I'm going to use uh, Zone 1 and trigger the alarm so that you can see the indication of the alarm as it comes through on a map. Because all of our technology um, has ranging capabilities built in, you have these icons that are overlaid at the actual point of the breach in the, in the zone of detection. So I'm going to go ahead and move that detection point and trigger that alarm again. And you'll see that asterisk that's marking the time or the um, intrusion line in that zone has moved down the line accordingly. And again, one more time so you can see that move again. And then you see that asterisk appearing again. And the same thing can be done for another zone. So if you have two zones, and you wanted to show two different points of breach, um, this is how you would do it. Okay, and the last thing we want to show you is the map and how to use the map for navigation within Symfony Client. So what I've done here is I've just docked the map back into the main console for Symfony Client just for uh, better visibility. And you'll notice that I've got two cameras on uh, this map. So I've got the, uh, the Core LPR, the loop video file that I'm using, and then I've also got my thermal perimeter camera, which is associated to the alarm that uh, is triggered with Zone 1. So I'm just going to trigger the Zone 1 alarm again here so that we can get that flashing um, indication on the map for the zone that was breached along with the asterisk marking the uh, location. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on that camera that's associated to that zone and as you'll see it just brings that camera up to full visibility for me so that I can monitor that video feed with the associated alarm. Now let's say maybe that's one of two, three, or four cameras that are focused on that zone. I could select the other cameras on that map as well and it'll change the video to that uh, point in time and location as well. I could take that live if I need to. And so very quickly you can navigate utilizing your map and the different cameras associated with those specific zones that you might want to um, to target or track. And that's that's it. That's the, uh, the long and the short of integrating Network Manager into Symfony and a lot of the benefits you get with seeing the ranging detection on the actual zone that you've tripped, um, having it change cameras, slew PTZs to preset locations, um, and also the alarm feed that's coming in through both the simple and the advanced mode of the alarm console. Hope that was beneficial for you and appreciate you watching. Thank you.